Hey everyone, in this video we will get the data from a form and submit the data to a server with the fetch API in JavaScript. Okay, so here in the HTML we have a form. It has three inputs, one for the username, one for the password, and a checkbox for the terms and conditions. Right, fairly standard and a button that if you click on it will submit the form. Right, so that looks like this in the browser. It has no styling, username, password. They have placeholders here, checkbox, and I can submit this. Okay, now what we want is that when the user has filled out the form and submits the form, we want to send the data to a server. But first we have to get the data from the form. Right, so here I have created these script tags so in here I can write JavaScript so first we need to select the form right I will call that form element or form L I can use document.query selector and it has a class of form so I can select it like this right so I like to append L to my variable names if there is a, a reference to an HTML element stored in that and then we want to listen for the submit event on that HTML element and when that event occurs, this function will be run. When you have a form, right? So if I fill this out and I submit this, you can see this, the page sort of refreshes itself. And this is because the when you submit a form, there is some default behavior. So maybe you remember that you know, if you've been coding for a bit longer, that these forms used to have an action attribute, right? So here you would specify, um, you know, some kind of URL. And this is actually where the form data would be sent to in the past. So when you submit a form, the browser would automatically send it to this address here. Right? And that's still what it's trying to do here, right? Now, these days, we don't want that. We don't want that default behavior. We want to do it ourselves in our JavaScript. So manually, you could say. So we don't want that default behavior. So what we actually get with every with every event handler, as this is called, we're handling the submit event here with this function. The browser always gives us an event object right? with some information about the event that just happened. And one of the things that we can do with this is say event dot prevent default right so we don't get that default behavior right so now when I submit here nothing happens right which is actually what we want right? but now we actually want to get the data from the form uh, the best way to do this is simply with uh, well as follows so I'll create a new variable form data and we can actually uh, use new form data and we need to pass a reference to a form. So that's what we have in form L. So what this will do is it will take all the data from this form, the username, the, the, the password, the terms and conditions checkbox, and it will put that in an object that we get here, right? And the reason that this exists is to make it easier for us to work with the form data, right? You can imagine it, it would be a lot of work if we had to select each of these elements individually, right? Imagine if you have a very large form and you had to select all of the inputs manually so instead we can use new form data and only pass the form element or the reference to it and now we get an object that makes it very easy for us to work with the form data so I can say for example show me the uh, value for username right form data dot get let me quickly log this now if I submit this we see the value for the username we can also set it manually so we can override what the user wrote. I can I can even add something, append or uh, delete, right? I can do all sorts of things, right? But it does not prepare the data yet for sending it to a server, right? We need to do an additional step for that. We want to send data to a server with the fetch API. So let's actually see how, this, how that would look like. So we can use fetch and then here we'd ha we have to specify the URL to which we want to send the data. And right, I'm going to use a service called recrest.in. This is a service we can use to just do some quick tests. The rest of the URL is like this, right? So usually you have to word API in an external uh, API and then the name of the resource right so in this case we want to post to the user's resource right let's imagine that this form is some kind of register form right so we want to create a new user now this is what you would have for a get request but we want a post request so we have to specify some additional things the first one being the method right the default is actually get but here we want post now, when you send data to a server, you have to let the server know what the format of the data will be. And we do that with headers. So I can say headers, and the only header actually, only one header needs to be specified, is content type. 
and you know usually it's json right these days we usually send data in json format json is in the application category now by the way you cannot write object keys like this with a hyphen so people typically wrap this in quotation marks most of the time you're actually gonna uh, exchange data with a server in json format however when you work with forms like we are working here the typical format is actually um, a query string and this is actually also called xww form url encoded right so this is the more typical format for uh, submitting form data and that's what we will use here now if your form has file upload so maybe the users can upload a an image or a, a video you may want to use multi-part form data right so if you have large binary files this is the content type you want to use but we will use uh, this one and now in body we have to uh, pass the actual data that we want to submit and so here we have our form data and now we need to turn that into the format this format and so it needs to be url encoded format and it will basically be a big query string so what is a query string well maybe you've seen this before in a url so it's like username is john and password is you know something secret and then with a checkbox, by the way, it's encoded with on or off. The checkbox here has a name of terms conditions. Terms conditions is on, right? If it's checked, right? So this would be a query string, right? And the question mark here is to uh, separate the query string from the path. Right, so a query string is just a bunch of key value pairs, right? So how do we get form data here into that format? So we'll say const data. Well, we can actually use new URL search params and we can actually give the form data object and it will create that query string or this format out of that, right? So now this will be what's called URL encoded. So we put that in data and that's actually what we want to send, right? So we're not sending it as part of the URL, right? So especially with passwords, you shouldn't send that as part of the URL. Right. We're sending it as part of the body, right? This will be the payload. And also, uh, we actually don't have to specify the headers here, right? I just wanted to show you this to, so you could see how that would work. But if we leave this off, the browser can still correctly infer what the format is, and it will actually automatically set the content type header for us, right? So we don't have to specify that here. All right, so this is enough to send data. Now, maybe this server sends back a response, like a success message, or, you know, if something goes wrong, maybe uh, an, an error message. So I have a whole video on how the Fetch API uh, works and how you could properly structure it. Definitely check it out after this video. Here, we'll just do something, we'll keep it pretty basic. So we get some kind of response, and uh, if the server sends back response, it will be in JSON format, which we will parse here. And then uh, we get the actual data here. We could log that. If the network request or response does not arrive, we will actually, well, the promise from fetch here, it's promise based, will actually reject as it's called. And we will go in the catch block here. Right, so we can make this more sophisticated, so definitely check out the Fetch API video. We can also use async await these days, but uh, we'll keep it basic here. All right, so then I'm going to save here. So now we're going to check to see if this works. My username is blah blah. My password is secret. I'm going to check the box here and I'm going to click submit. And we actually get something back, although we are not super interested in that. It does confirm that everything went all right, because this is actually what that service does when you submit something. So uh, it actually gives it an ID and created at. And we can also check the network tab to double check. So here we can actually see users. So we see general information, response headers request headers right so you can see content type has been set for us automatically by the browser the payload right so the data that we actually sent this is indeed what we sent right so that is how you can get data from a form and submit it with the fetch api in javascript all right that was it for this video hope that you learned a lot now if you like the video and you want to become a professional modern javascript developer then definitely check out the full course it has two beautiful real world projects that we built from scratch and you will learn much more like fetch and promises and async await destructuring the spread operator at advanced javascript how to structure or architect your projects modern front-end concepts like components state and rendering and much more it's all in there check it out the link is in the description in any case thanks for watching and i hope to see you soon